everybody, my name is Susan Moeller and I am the Business Development Manager here at BuzzSumo. Today we are joined by Neil Schaefer. He is a social media strategy speaker, consultant, and author. He's literally spoken all over the world and he's an active educator teaching people at Rutgers University as well as the Irish Management Institute about how to use social media. He's also the founder of his own social media agencies. We are enthusiastic about having him here to do a webinar to talk about some of the ways that agencies can effectively use BuzzSumo. As you know, there are lots of differences in how we handle social media and content marketing. If we're doing it for an individual brand, if we're doing it for a publisher, or if we're doing it as a social media agency. Now, there are some tips in what Neil is going to offer you today that will be applicable if you are a brand or if you're a publisher, but he is going to focus on the special processes involved in doing social media for more than one organization at a time. One of the main things that he's going to focus on today is the process that you use. As you know, process is really critical to success in social media. And Neil's gonna talk a little bit about creating a process that represents your strategy and your goals, and then using a tool like BuzzSumo and some other tools that he'll also mention to support that entire system. So let's get started. Welcome, Neil. All right, so the five steps or the five areas in which you should be using BuzzSumo from an agency perspective, especially if you're doing social media on behalf of your clients. Uh, step number one, and by the way, there's time at the end of the webinar. I'm going to make sure we have 10 minutes to go through any questions you have. And if you have any burning questions as I go through these slides, please put it in the chat box, and I'm sure Susan will, uh, will let me know. Susan, are we good to go so far? No burning questions? Nope, we're good to go. Thanks so much. You can keep on going. All right. So number one is this notion of a role model and analyzing against your role model. What I mean by this is that, and this is just an example for Twitter, for any given social network, especially for networks that you are representing a client for that maybe are relatively new to your company, you always want to have a role model in your industry that has already been doing what you want to do. And there's a tremendous amount of information you can glean from role models. Uh, you can also consider these uh, competitive benchmarks. So if I was to tell you what are the social media metrics that I like to uh, provide to my clients, one of the things I look, like, I look for are how are we doing compared to our competitors, right? And with social media, because all the information is public, and a tool like BuzzSumo taps into that big data and provides it to you on a silver platter for your action, there's a heck of a lot of insight we can glean that's really going to help uh, us servicing our clients. So what you're going to see throughout this webinar are a number of screenshots. I know these aren't the easiest to see, but I've tried to include the entire screen so you can see exactly what, what I selected to do this. So if you have a second monitor up, you can actually be uh, buzzing along in BuzzSumo. Obviously, you need to have BuzzSumo Pro to take advantage of everything I'm talking about here. That goes without saying. Um, so uh, this is a look at, you know, looking at my competitor's website, uh, BuzzSumo has a lot of great features that's going to help us compare ourselves to our competitors. So in content research and content analysis, I can put in the domain of my competitors. I'm just I don't consider BuzzSumo a competitor by any means, but just as a, a reference point, let's put in BuzzSumo.com. Immediately, um, I'm seeing that they are getting an average share per content of 334, which is quite nice. Um, you know, this is a good benchmark, and I could put in my own URL and see how many shares I am getting on average per piece of content. I can also see where they're getting the shares. No surprise, right? Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn. But what's interesting is that the Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn is almost even. You know, my maximized social business gets a lot more shares on Twitter than on Facebook and LinkedIn, and my content is pretty similar. That means that I'm missing out on potential action on Facebook and LinkedIn. And vice versa, BuzzSumo could probably be getting more shares on Twitter, for example. Um, on here, we can take a look at the average shares by by content type. Um, as you know, when you do searches for content on BuzzSumo, it is predefined content by content type. So how-to articles or lists, 
well, surprise, surprise, the lists seem to be doing better for social shares and how-to articles. Well, maybe I want to tweak my content strategy for my client or for my brand uh, to be doing more of these list type posts because they get more shares in social media. Now, I can take it one step further. You don't see anything at the top in the next screenshot because now I'm scrolling down. And if you continue to scroll down, you begin to see some other interesting information. So total shares by date published. BuzzSumo publishes on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Uh, maybe sometimes on Thursday, maybe sometimes on Sunday. But clearly, they are getting most of their shares on a Wednesday. In fact, Twitter, uh, they're getting a lot more shares on a Wednesday than on other days. So once again, this gives me an idea from an editorial calendar of publishing content of maybe what days I want to optimize my publishing content for. And I can go even further. We talked about that comparison of how-tos versus lists. Well, what about word count? And no surprise, those definitive authoritative posts that have a lot more words get more shares. And I think this is something in general we're seeing. Those 350 to 500 word posts, they may be great for SEO, but in terms of getting organic, uh, you know, uh, sharing and organic traffic, they're really not doing as well as these others. And I can even go further down and saying, hey, you know, Twitter likes a certain uh, word count. Facebook likes uh, a word count that's longer. Um, we can go crazy with the analytics here. But these give us some really, really good insight. And if we do this for a few of our competitors, uh, it's going to give us even more insight. And hopefully, we'll start to see some common trends. And we'll want to align ourselves with those trends so that we can further optimize our own content um, by comparing ourselves. And there's more, right? We, we continue to scroll down the screen. And once again, if you're just joining us, we are at the content research, content analysis, analysis screen. Just for content analysis, I, I entered a URL, and it could be any URL. Um, we keep going down um, average shares by topic. This might not be as important. Uh, uh, top pieces of content, well, actually, it is important. I'm sorry. Uh, right now, you just see the, the all networks. But I can you know, further look at Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Google+, and Pinterest and see the types of articles that get the most shares on each network. Maybe your focus in social media for your client is LinkedIn and not Facebook. That's why it's really relevant. Each one of these is its own country, its own community, to be able to segment in this way, which BuzzSumo gives you the ability to do. And then, obviously, the top pieces of content. Um, and I'm going to get into more about you know, what, we can, uh, what insight we can glean from this. But you know, number one, obviously, what is getting shared from my competitor's website? And does it offer me any insight as to how I can optimize uh, my own client or my own brand's content and, and social media in general? Uh, furthermore, and right now, we're, we're just looking at comparing ourselves to competitors. I can go into the uh, content research, content analysis, and instead of just entering a URL, we can go head to head here. So this is a domain comparison between BuzzSumo and my site, Maximize Social Business. So uh, I can get a look here, and, and you know, right away, here's a great KPI. BuzzSumo, on average, is getting more shares. I'm at 253, which isn't bad, but BuzzSumo is getting 334. And you can see here, clearly, uh, I'm doing well on Twitter, better than BuzzSumo, but on Facebook and LinkedIn, I'm missing out. So what is BuzzSumo doing in Facebook? What is BuzzSumo doing in LinkedIn that I am missing out on? That's something I want to see. I'm getting a little bit more on Pinterest. Uh, maybe BuzzSumo wants to look into that. But uh, you know, by looking at it in such a way, you're going to get a lot of great ideas. And, and literally in a few minutes, you're going to be able to get a lot of ideas of how to better optimize uh, what you're doing for your clients. And obviously, you know, we, we looked at... I'm going to go back a little bit here because when we uh, did this little search in content research, content analysis, I showed you this top posts that are getting shared uh, from BuzzSumo.com and the total shares. Well, we can more easily see the same result uh, by going to content research most shared and entering the URL here. Uh, this, is going to, this is going to show us uh, you know, how my competitor's content performs in social media. Once again, we can see this by social network, which I think is really critical because every network is different and your strategy for every network is probably different and you may not even be managing your client's social media on Pinterest or on Google+, in which case you want to focus on those main networks. But this is another way of getting at the same information but allowing us to splice and dice it in a different way. And there's more. Uh, this is another feature, and 
I, I think this is probably the main feature that I know I use the most, that a lot of you might use the most. But we also have, you know, I've showed you a lot of this content research, content analysis. We can also go into the Facebook Analyzer, which maybe you haven't been using as much as you should. But once again, I can go into BuzzSumo. I can see the most popular post type, uh, post length, the most popular day, most popular time. I can take their monthly total interactions as a KPI and compare myself to. Sure, some of this information you might be able to get in Facebook Insights when you do comparisons, but um, this goes, I think, beyond that. And it's another added feature that you should be using uh, as part of your BuzzSumo subscription when you want to compare yourself to your competitors and to get insight as to how you can be improving your own social media or that of your clients. And, you know, as we scroll down in the screen, you know, average engagement per post type, uh, per character range, uh, what days we should post, average engagement per days. Uh, you know, it's going to be different. I know for each one of my clients, it's very, very different depending on that, that target audience. Um, really interesting to see those times of days, and we know that the times of days can be critical because the life of a Facebook post is only a few hours in many cases. Um, so once again, this is really, if you were to do this for three or four of your clients' competitors, I think that you're really going to get a good idea as to, you know, days, times, types of content to help you optimize uh, what you're doing for your clients. So that was just by comparing yourself to your competitors and all the data that BuzzSumo gives you, all the different things you can do. Uh, Susan, I'm going to take another little 15 second pause here. Do we have any questions from that or should I keep going? Um, yeah, let's see. So one of the questions that came through, I'll just go ahead and answer, which is how does BuzzSumo determine if content is a how-to or a list? Uh, basically, BuzzSumo identifies that based on the first word in the headline. So a how-to post would have how is the first word a list as a numeral and uh, why and what posts are the same way. The other question is more BuzzSumo related. Is every link from every URL analyzed BuzzSumo by BuzzSumo, or do you need a certain level to traffic to utilize this comparison? Uh, basically, BuzzSumo responds to social sharing. So as long as content is being shared socially, we should um, have it in our index. And let's see. I think that's all for now, Neil. Thank you. Well, thank you. And that's a great point. Um, obviously, every tool uses some sort of algorithm. Um, and this is what can make or break the tool if the algorithm's off. But if you think about it, every list post usually has a number associated to it. So uh, I, I like that algorithm that Bessimo has. That makes a lot of sense. And I think we can all be confident that that's a pretty good, pretty good measurement. Um, so thank you for uh, jumping in. It's a pleasure doing this with you because obviously you own the product. So you can answer any question about that, Suma. Uh, um, so, happy to jump in. <laughs> awesome. So let's go to step number two. So, uh, you know, we talked about all the insights we can glean from looking at our competitors. Second thing we need to look at is what about our own content? And once again, I'm coming at this from a social media angle, not a content marketing angle. But from my perspective, social media represents the convergence of information and communication. In other words, we began using social media as a way to keep in touch with friends, colleagues, classmates, what have you. But over time, we have now been going to social media more and more for information. In fact, a lot of you may have found out about this webinar through social media. So that's just a, an example of how social media has become this epitome of the convergence of information and communication. And this gives companies and brands a chance to participate by providing content. Because if you're not providing content, you know, you can only say, how is your day today? I mean, what are companies going to talk about, right? So content, especially for companies, truly is the currency of social media. And any social media program is going to be dependent on creating content. Um, and, you know, content is huge, especially if you're in a B2B company. Most effective B2B marketers spend 39% of their marketing budgets on content, coming straight from the source at Content Marketing Institute. So content is huge. And when we create content on behalf of our clients, if we can create better content, it's obviously going to be more effective. It's going to make our agency look better. It's going to help our clients look better. And everyone's happy. So it's a serious topic. Um, the first thing we can do that I use BuzzSumo for is content ideation. So maybe we have a keyword-based approach, a topic-based approach. Whatever approach you have for creating content, uh, BuzzSumo is an excellent tool for content ideation because right there I can just type in content marketing, and this is just in that general 
you know, screen on content research and get an idea as to what is being shared. Why is this important? Um, you know, first of all, I can see this by social network segmentation. So once again, if I'm focusing on a, a B2B decision maker audience that I think is primarily in LinkedIn, I'm going to be able to find as to what content does well in that network. In other words, and I'm hoping that I did the slides right. Uh, okay, I didn't do the slides right. Okay, actually I did. I want to come up with this concept, and sorry for fast forwarding here, I'm going to go through this all in a second. Um, and I talk about this in content curation. It's called standing on the shoulders of giants. Whether it's content ideation or whether it's content creation, curation, the idea is that there's already been people that have done this, been there, been that. Let's leverage what they've done. Maybe there are companies that have already created a lot of content that haven't done well. Let's not repeat what they've done. Let's look at what's been successful and try to replicate successful elements of that. And in this way, we can leapfrog past them. It's, you know, why is China growing so fast as an economy? Well, they don't need to spend money of putting in fixed lines for phones. They can go straight to wireless, right? This is an advantage that latecomers have to the market. This is why you're also never too late to the game in social media marketing, is that you can leapfrog past your competitors by standing on the shoulder of giants, assuming you have access to that data, right? And obviously, and I'm just going to fast rewind here, a buzz sumo gives you gives you access to that data. It is a huge advantage and you should be leveraging this for content ideation. So do different keyword searches, segment them by social networks, and you're gonna get a lot of great ideas. I'm not saying you wanna copy the competitors, but certainly you're gonna see trends as to what types of content, what types of titles seem to do well in any given social network. And that's the type of thing you wanna do to optimize your own content creation. Um, another thing is there are some companies that when they create content, let's say they create short posts. Uh, there have been examples of companies that have leveraged, you know, uh, Super Bowl ads to immediately be responding to Super Bowl ads. So if you are in the business of creating really, really trending co content, uh, you, you want to uh, basically newsjack what's trending uh, from a content perspective. Uh, you know, BuzzSumo has you covered as well. Once again, in this content research uh, trending now feature, um, and we can even uh, filter topics, we can do keyword searches as well, but it, it, it obviously does best with these categories. But if we want to find out what's happening, like in the last hour, in the last six hours, if we want to pride ourselves of being the first to market, being ahead of our competition, we can always be using this and feel pretty confident that we're always going to have our finger on the pulse of trends in our market. Um, you know, here's a great one. Tostito's new party bag knows when you've been drinking and will even call you an Uber. Um, you know, we can sort of see how that would be, that would go very viral. And uh, we may want to be one of the first to post that because it's a, you know, if, if this is, if this is the type of content that we post from, from a company or for our clients. Um, we also have another way of using BuzzSumo for content creation is this notion of guest bloggers or guest authors or doing roundup lists. Now, this is also part of the influencer marketing component that I'm going to talk about in a little bit later. But uh, roundup lists have become a, uh, I won't say necessarily a critical part, they've, be, they've become very popular of creating these articles of roundup lists of people contributing content. And the idea is that hopefully, uh, you know, it gives you social proof that you have these famous people uh, that have contributed a, co a comment for your blog, but hopefully they're also going to share from their blog as well, right? And therefore you get more viral reach. Uh, one of the really cool features that I like, and I have my own blog, Maximize Social Business, that's comprised of multiple authors. For any given blog at, you know, that has multiple authors, Social Media Examiner is a great example. I can go into content analysis. I showed you how to do this for competitors, for competitive benchmarking and content analysis and domain comparison. We can go into top authors and for any given URL, I can see, huh, you know, most of the articles published on Social Media Examiner were done by Social Media Examiner. But I can also see that, wow, Christy Hines, who is not a employee of Social Media Examiner, who is a guest blogger, um, got the second most shares. Uh, I can also uh, arrange this by average shares and say, wow, Lisa Jenkins got, you know, more uh, average shares per post published, but Christy Hines got, you know, a few thousand shares for each uh, content that she published. Maybe this is someone that I want to reach out to, to either become a blogger at my blog or to contribute a comment uh, in a roundup list type of content that a lot of people are creating these days. 
So this is another cool feature. You can you know do it for entrepreneur.com or inc.com, Mashable, any given URL, um, and it's truly something that I've never seen in any other tool. So you'll want to make sure you take advantage of this, uh, especially if you are fond of doing these roundup lists on occasion. Uh, Susan, I'm going to take another break. I think it's really good to stop in between each one of these five steps. Do we have any questions or should I keep going? No questions right now. You can keep going. Anyone, if you do have right, questions, so. feel free to add them and we'll take them as we go as well, at the, as, well as at the end. Cool. So we're going to just keep going forward here. Step number three, curate your content. And I already gave you a little uh, uh, sneak peek into this. So uh, this convergence of information and communication helps companies in a lot of ways. It allows you to reach out and engage, obviously, with your customers, your prospects, your partners, your network, and a new social network. I think the biggest advantage, and if, if you were to see the three advantages, you can obviously discover new business through monitoring information um, and, and manage your reputation, but it's really this notion of creating opportunity just by communicating and sharing information. It doesn't happen overnight, but over time, it will lead your client or your company into having a presence and being seen as authoritative or even being seen as a thought leader on any given subject. And here's the thing. We talked about the content ideation. This came from your own keyword or topic analysis, those things that are aligned with your product. When we talk about content curation, we talk about really having an audience-centric approach. So one of my clients has a product for mothers of young babies. And it's a very, very niche product. Now, I can talk about that product all day long, but I know that moms are going to tune it out because they're interested in all sorts of things. So when I curate content using BuzzSumo, which is my primary content creation tool, uh, I will look for similar types of topics that have done really well on social that my target audience is interested in. And therefore, it needs to be an audience-centric approach. In other words, what do they want to hear? Not what do I want to tell them? Um, and this is where you become a curator, right? Uh, even if you publish a, a blog post every day, but you want to post two or three times a day to Facebook or Twitter, what are you going to talk about other than your own content, right? This is where content curation comes through. But obviously, 85% of marketers think content curation is an important tool for establishing thought leadership. And it's really, you know, you are giving your unique perspective on the world either on behalf of your brand or on behalf of your client. And that's where, you know, sourcing other people's content comes into play. In fact, um, you know, content creation I think is so important. You have all these rules of, hey, how often should I be curating content on behalf of my client versus posting our own content? Uh, I think a lot of people talk about the 80-20 rule. I think 80-20 is even too self-promotional in all honesty. Uh, I created my own 911 rule. Um, nine times the content of others, one times your content adds value, this is ideally blog content, and one times promotional content. And when I talk about the content of others, sure, when you do searches uh, in BuzzSumo, you find a lot of content. I focus on the content of uh, influencers, the content of advocates, people and brands that are already sharing my content. Um, if they're a customer, if they're a partner, if they're a fan, those are people that I want to share the content of because that's going to give me a little bit additional mileage for my content curation. So I'm not talking about just randomly curating content. It's using BuzzSumo as a first step to find the content. Then it's putting a filter over it uh, according to these types of people that I can gain additional benefit from sharing their content and tagging them when I share the content. Now I'm going to show you an interesting case study of one of my clients uh, from an agency perspective. And their content was 99% curated. Okay, this is a company that offers products and services for those that are looking to reduce the risk of getting Alzheimer's disease later in life. So healthcare industry, all they had was a landing page. Okay, I can't every day send people a landing page. And in fact, we ended up uh, finding Twitter it was where we gained the most success and maybe tweeting six to eight times a day. And 99% of that, like I said, was curated content. Um, obviously, we did email marketing. We did paid social. This less than $2 cost per conversion was getting people to sign up to our mailing list. Where then we, we got them into a marketing automation funnel, what have you. Um, but within 90 days, we were able to build a very, very targeted database of more than 10,000 people. And even the Dr. Oz show reached out to us. Uh, that is how successful we were in a very, very short amount of time. But really what fueled all this was the curated content. 
was that we had an active Twitter feed. Someone may have seen an ad, they would have jumped to the feed, they would have seen a lot of engagement, a lot of retweets, a lot of shares, all done using other people's content. That's the ROI of content curation. And if you're interested, by the way, in this topic, this is a preview of a, a, a course I'm going to be teaching uh, at Social Media Marketing World, a speech I'm going to be giving on the topic of social media growth hacking. But content curation is an important part of that. And that's just sort of a little preview. So once again, you're standing on the shoulders of giants, something that because you have BuzzSumo, it is your secret weapon, your competitive advantage, and you should be using this to easily curate content that's already been vetted, right? Curate content by standing on the shoulders of giants, whatever topic it is, you know, do the most shared, uh, use the filters to try to micro-target, segment by the social networks that are strategic to you, and go from there. For my newsletter for Maximize Social Business, I tend to focus on content that was most shared on LinkedIn. Uh, because I find very, very different results when I do that segmentation versus a Facebook or a Pinterest or even a Twitter. So if you haven't segmented by social network, I truly hope you will uh, take a spin for that. And then once again, just like content ideation, uh, if we want to curate, you know, if we're curating on a daily basis, we want to make sure that we're curating trending content. So let's go back to that uh, content research trending now and try to find content that makes sense to share that truly is trending right now. Um, for more evergreen type of content or maybe for newsletter type of content on a weekly basis, that's where we can go into just this most shared content. Uh, but if we really want to be at the top of our game and really want to focus on the trending content, that's where you want to use that trending now tab. Um, and another great feature here is I can do in most shared, the screen you saw before was a keyword, social media marketing, right? I can go in and do a keyword which is an at username. So this is my own at username, and it's basically going to show you uh, all of the content that I've shared. So if there is an influencer and you want to see all the content that they've shared, and Susan, you can correct me if I'm incorrect in this functionality. This is just something I found by trial and error. Um, if you were to put in their Twitter at username, you should be able to see all the content that they've shared, and you can now curate content that's been vetted by influencers, which I think is a, a killer uh, functionality, once again, that BuzzSumo brings to the game that might not have been apparent to you, but it's just something that I found. Um, in fact, we can go even further, and if we go into, for instance, uh, let's see here, uh, why social media is crucial to drive sales to e-commerce sites, I can go even deeper into the view shares, right? So when, when I go in here, my name is not listed at the top, but when you get to my name, and you, t you click the view link shared, you're going to get even more information in terms of content curation. You're going to see all the different links I shared when I shared them conveniently. We can see who else has shared them. But it's also going to do an analysis of the URLs or the domains as well as the topic keywords of the content that I like to share. Uh, you know, uh, I share a lot from VentureBeat, Marketing Land, Search Engine Journal. Are these sites on your RSS feed for uh, sites that you should be curating content from? Um, and if you do this for the top 10 influencers in any given industry, you're going to get a lot of great insight as to where you should be curating content. And now if we put those domains back in, I did an example of doing an at Neil Schaefer. We can also put the domain back in here and obviously find the most shared content from that domain, uh, you know, using these filters by date. So, um, you know, content curation, definitely BuzzSumo is really the only tool you'll need for this and, and by far the best tool, the only tool that my agency uses for it. Um, because we only have five minutes left before we get to the questions, I want to make sure we get through all the content as I promised. So I'm just going to keep going, Susan. Step number four, leverage the other. Um, this is primarily going to talk about influencer marketing. And if you're not using influencer marketing on behalf of your client, you're missing out on a potential gold mine. Uh, influencer marketing um, can provide your agency a lot of revenue, and the, the more you do it, I think the better you become at it, the better results you have, and you begin to build out a database of all the influencers that you've engaged in, engaged with, that allows you to tap into them in the future, um, and allows you to really be at, at the top of your game from an agency perspective. So hopefully you're pitching your clients on this. So where does BestSumo fit in, in helping you with your influencer marketing? Well, if you think about it, you know, what are the key components of influencer marketing? It involves social media because influencers are expected to spread the word through their personal social channels, and it involves content. Either you're creating content for influencers or they're creating the content themselves. So this is where BuzzSumo comes in. 
you know, specifically Basu Mahathan Influencers tab. Uh, and if we go to Twitter influencers, and once again I typed in this keyword, I'm going to get a great list of influencers. Michael Stelzner, who uh, owns Social Media Examiner, obviously comes up number one here, no surprises. But I'm going to get a lot of different content here, a lot of different data as to you know who are influencers. I like the average retweets. Is it someone? And I uh, deal with a lot of mommy bloggers, and I can tell you there's some mommy bloggers that they just spew a lot of content and get no engagement, and those are not the people. Those may be people that just bought a lot of followers um, but don't really have any true community. And using a tool like Basuma is going to help you vet out who has a community who hasn't. Who gets a lot of retweets? Who gets um, a, a large reply ratio or a retweet ratio? Uh, and then who has a certain amount of domain authority, right? Um, so if they were going to publish a blog post on behalf of your client, do they even have a great authority for their website? Or uh, did they just buy fake followers? Did they just dupe Alexa into having a high Alexa rank, but really they have little authority, so there's very little SEO value or community value from their, from their publishing. Uh, so hopefully if you're nodding, you've, you've been there, done that, as, as I have. Uh, and that's why BuzzSumo is a great vetting tool to not only help you find the influencers, but to help you analyze them. Um, obviously, uh, once we go in, and I, I showed you uh, this Michael Steltzner, there's the Save Influencer tab. This is a, a relatively new feature of BuzzSumo. I can now save them to a list, let's say social media market influencers, and then at any time I can go into my outreach list and easily uh, you know, compare these uh, influencers. And this is pretty critical. Uh, I know that when I do influencer outreach, I usually start with a list of say 100, and when you're doing a list of 100, you want to be able to easily analyze, compare, and most importantly, export this into your own CSV or, or Excel sheet uh, for further manipulation. So um, BuzzSumo is a great tool which just hands that information all to you on a silver platter. Um, who are the influencers influencing? So uh, I saw you know, socialmediaexaminer.com. This is where we take a look at backlinks. Now backlinks obviously are critical for SEO, but it also shows me a sign of influence. If I was going to look at uh, the influencer website of socialmediaexaminer.com um, and do content research backlinks and enter that URL, it's going to give me an idea as to what are the domains that this domain is influencing. And maybe that's going to give me ideas of other influencers or it's going to help vet. You know, if I see so, if I see a mommy blogger that's really influential, uh, I want to see, you know, if they're really influential, are they getting any backlinks, right? And this is going to be a really, really great tool to help you assess pretty quickly as to how many and what type of backlinks they are getting. Um, and once again, um, who are the influencers influencing? Uh, if I was to look into uh, any given post that Michael Stelzner shared, this is the first one that came up, 19 Facebook marketing predictions, who are the other people that are sharing that post? So if I was to look at an influencer's website and to look at a blog post from the influencer's website, who is sharing them? Are there any influencers sharing that post? Immediately, I see Kim Garst, who is a huge influencer, has 500,000 followers, you know, cloud score of like 86, uh, insanely influential person. I've, I've now vetted that indeed uh, this is influential. Um, and another way of leveraging the other with BuzzSumo is not just the influencers, but also your brand advocates. This is an example of a post from my site. Well, who's sharing it, right? I know that I'm sharing it. Uh, I want to see who else is sharing it. Are there people sharing it that somehow I missed out on because I'm only using a Hootsuite or Spout Social and, and I'm not getting notifications of all the engagement or maybe I've turned off all the retweet notifications. So this allows you to better understand your own brand advocates and to tap into them as well. You can create an outreach list for your own fans, right? Fans that have shared your content, uh, something that you should do on behalf of your client. The final one is the quickest one. This is probably uh, the Another killer functionality that BuzzSumo has that a lot of you may not realize is paid social. Um, paid social is the other way to scale your, your agency, right? And I like to say if social media is the amplifier, paid social is the accelerator. It's the Disneyland fast path. It's going to help you achieve any goal you have in social media a heck of a lot faster. It costs a little money, but just like the Disneyland fast path, spend an extra $100, you get to go on more rides. You get to spend less time waiting to go on rides, and it's going to help you have an overall improved customer experience. So how BuzzSumo works is in the influencers, and uh, it, it may be hard to have followed or, or understand what this is, there is a little functionality here called Audience Builder. Love, love, love this feature. What it allows you to do is 
I put in, I didn't even put in a keyword, I just put in who is sharing content from my website, who is sharing content from, you know, let's say these are my competitors, right? I can find users who have shared any content that has come from these three websites. Boom, it shows me that there are 74,000 people that over the last year have shared content that has been published on any of these three websites, and I can create a Twitter tailored audience. I can export this as a Twitter ad audience. I can then import this into my Twitter ad dashboard, and I can promote content that only goes out to them. This is a killer, killer way of saving a lot of money and making your Twitter advertising a lot more effective by going through this process. I urge you, if you do Twitter ads on behalf of your clients or for your own self, that you, uh, that you experiment and use this functionality. I think you're going to find uh, much better results. Um, you then export the Twitter audience. For those of you that are still new, it exports a CSV file containing the usernames that can be uploaded as a tailored audience on Twitter. Running out of time, fortunately, we're all done. The five-step summary, analyzing your role model for competitive benchmarks for ideas of how you can better your social media, your content, using BuzzSumo to help create your content, to curate content, to leverage the other. We talked here about influencer marketing and uh, uh, brand advocacy, as well as paid social vis-a-vis -vis Twitter tailored audiences. You've been a great audience because I can't see you or hear you. I have no idea of <laughs> what you're doing as you're watching this. Uh, I, normally, when I don't get a lot of questions, it means you're absorbing the information and, and the light bulbs are going on, which is great if that's the case. Uh, obviously, I am not affiliated in any way with Basumo. Uh, I am a, a happy fan and a power user. Um, so if you have any questions that maybe go beyond Basumo, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, there's my contact information. And uh, Susan, I'm going to hand it over to you. You can also, obviously, uh, your number one resource for BuzzSumo questions is BuzzSumo itself. So you should be emailing them at help at buzzsumo.com if you have any questions about how to use their tool vis-a-vis -vis what I went over. And I thank you for being a great audience. Susan, I'm going to hand it back to you. Wow, Neil, thank you so much. That was really great. You um, did something with BuzzSumo that I've never seen before. So when you ask if I could verify that that's what it was doing, I'm going to have to go and check that out. So I really appreciate the, <laughs> um, the level of understanding that you have of our tool and being so willing to present it to our audience today. There are a couple of questions. One of, one of them is from Neil, or I'm sorry, no, it's from Axel asking Neil, have you compared BuzzSumo to some other social tools? What are the main advantages? advantages against its competitors? That's a really broad question because um, one of the main advantages in general is it does a few different things. There's some great influencer marketing tools out there. That's all they do. There's some great content tools out there. That's all they do. I've seen very, very few tools, and I got hooked into BuzzSumo because they, they aggregated that sharing data. So there's a lot of tools out there that just focus on the SEO aspect. But from a social media agency perspective, I want to know what I can get more organic uh, traffic for. Uh, and that's, you know, in, in some ways that's going to come down organic traffic from social media. And a lot of that's going to come down from the social share. So there have been a lot of content tools that have come after BuzzSumo that have tried to copy BuzzSumo and try to give you that, uh, you know, that information in terms of content sharing. I haven't found any tool that does it better. You add on to all the other functionality that, that BuzzSumo provides you, including the way of segmenting by social network. Um, I really haven't seen it done as well. Um, and, you know, if you're curious, try out other tools and do a keyword search, a domain search, a username search, and look at the results. Uh, you know, BuzzSumo just has better, deeper, uh, more trustworthy results that I've found when it comes to social shares than any other tool. So, uh, like I said, I'm not associated or affiliated in any way with BuzzSumo. I'm a big fan of tools. Uh, when they work well, I'm more than happy to evangelize on their behalf as, as BuzzSumo does. And I, you know, I, I give you 100% confidence um, uh, of everything I say. I, I have not found a tool that can replicate what BuzzSumo does. Thanks, Neil. I appreciate that. Um, Jeff is asking a question that's in part for you and a part for me. Uh, does the pro version include an analyzer for other networks? And he's specifically asking about LinkedIn. So uh, the Facebook analyzer provides uh, a level of depth into Facebook and the Twitter influencer section into Twitter that we don't duplicate when it comes to LinkedIn. Part of that is related to what LinkedIn actually releases 
as far as information about their users and their activities. So um, it's a little bit less open. Uh, that said, though, I think that there are some ways that you can use BuzzSumo to find information about LinkedIn. And Neil, I thought I would see if you um, have any ideas there. If not, I have one or two that I could share. Oh, why don't you go first, Susan? I'll add on if there's anything yeah. additional. Yeah, so actually, um, one thing that I would consider doing is using the most shared section of BuzzSumo and treating LinkedIn as a domain. So enter the LinkedIn domain um, or enter a search for a topic and filter the results to LinkedIn only. Then you can use the top authors section of the analysis tool to find the top authors about your topic on LinkedIn. And so I would add those those, uh, those people to your your influencer list. So that that's one way that that I approach uh, finding people who are influential about a topic on LinkedIn. Yeah, um, you know, I'm just uh, I'm curious, and I haven't really experimented with it. If people publish content using LinkedIn Pulse, I'm assuming that comes in as part of the LinkedIn.com domain, correct? Mm -hmm. It does. I'm actually doing a fairly extensive analysis of that data, so you can keep an eye out for that. But yes, you can analyze what's published on Pulse. And in the agency plan, you can export that information as well. So if you want to play around with it in, in spreadsheets and do more analysis, you can do that. Well, there you go. That I mean, that's, um, you know, it's funny uh, because I'm very active in the tool scene. Hey, you know, how do I publish to Snapchat for my desktop? And and as Susan said, the social networks themselves limit uh, what you can do. But I'm pretty confident that should LinkedIn open up their APIs vis-a-vis -vis being able to do this sort of content analysis that BuzzSumo can already do on Facebook and Twitter, I'm pretty sure BuzzSumo will be first to market with that on LinkedIn. But um, yeah, I can't add anything above what Susan said, but that those are some great ways. Uh, I mean, LinkedIn really is a black box to many tools these days. So and even for us, we you know they used to have something called LinkedIn Signal that used to give us a lot of business uh, insight, which we don't have anymore. Um, but uh, I think what Susan said is your best bet in terms of being able to analyze uh, you know influencers uh, and, and content coming out of LinkedIn. Thanks, Neil. Yeah. So um, another question is from Mallory. How do we manage content that is so spontaneous with our agency workload? I'm currently getting posts approved monthly. Um, so I guess if you need to get posts approved monthly, so you need to do things in advance, that trending content is probably going to be irrelevant to you um, unless you have a way of working with your client where that's sped up. Uh, everything else is, is relevant. Um, you know, evergreen content, the idea is that it could have been published a year ago, but it's still relevant today. And mm -hmm. I think that a lot of uh, people have found um, evergreen content to be successful. So even if it's a month in advance or a week in advance or a day in advance, using that shared content uh, I, I think is equally acceptable. I, I will say that a month in advance, a lot can happen in a month. So I, I do think that's sort of unrealistic. But if it is a month in advance, that means that it's even more important that your content really is evergreen and you really want to make sure you dig through BuzzSumo uh, to find that content that makes the most sense. That would be the most timely, uh, even if it's 30 days in the future. Yeah, that's really great. Um, Mallory, I would also like to suggest that uh, you can share the feed from trending. So if you click on the share this feed box on our trending section, you get a shareable link to that feed. You could send that to the client and then it might simplify the approval process because they could simply click on save articles and then um, you know they could tell you via the BuzzSumo interface that the content is approved for sharing. Um, so that that's one additional idea. I haven't tried it, but it, it could work. And then um, I think, let's see, we've got time for just one more question. If This is from Pollen. If you're choosing content to share based on how many shares it's already had on Facebook, Facebook, LinkedIn, etc., aren't you just sharing the same thing everyone else is? Wouldn't you want to share something that maybe people haven't already seen elsewhere? Yeah, that's a great point. In fact, that is a conversation I had with Steve Rayson, one of the founders of BuzzSumo. And there, there's two different types of mindsets there. The mindset that, hey, I want to find content and no one else has shared. Um, the funny thing is that even if you think everyone has shared it, not everyone has shared it. I've found that 
you know, I, I call it the democratization of information. If you think about it, uh, well, I'm going to age myself here, but you know, I, I grew up in an era where there were only three TV stations and a few major newspapers and a few magazines. So we all pretty much read the same news, but now it's all over the place, right? So with that same concept, um, I never find news that is not fresh, even if a lot of people have already shared it. But I'm using that as one gauge to uh, to find content that's already been vetted. So you know, the risk of using content that hasn't been vetted because it doesn't have a lot of social shares uh, is that risk. Is it, you know, it, it may not be popular. But I guess the other thing to point out is just because things are popular it doesn't mean it's good content and it doesn't mean it's going to be popular for your audience. So you bring up a great point there and that's something that you're going to have to vet. Um, I find that for a B2B audience, if you just focus on total shares and it's being generated by a lot of Facebook stuff, you get a lot of crap that really isn't relevant to your audience. Um, so obviously, you know, all this advice has to make sense. And uh, yeah, um, you know, you have to find the you know the right uh, the right combination that's going to work for for your audience. But I wouldn't be scared away of thinking because it's most popular, everybody has seen it, um, and everybody is publishing it. I've, I've never found that to be the case, in all honesty. Hmm. That's a great point. Um, we do have about four more questions, Neil. Would you like to go ahead and end, or do you want to hear the rest of the questions? No, let's do it. Okay, yeah. So um, Alex is, or Axel is asking, do you think BuzzSumo is still powerful enough to analyze content using a foreign language? I'll go ahead and take that one. I would say yes. Um, that's one reason that we do offer a two-week trial, uh, but we do have language filters, and you can also set up custom feeds, like a trending content dashboard for foreign language terms. So yeah, um, most people who've tried it with different languages have have been have been happy with it. Uh, Amy is asking, do you have any tips as to how to approach an influencer that you have identified? Great question. Um, and I give this advice a lot, but I get approached as being an influencer in the social media industry and the tools industry, and, mm -hmm. and I and I approach others as well. So from both sides of the coin, um, there's two different ways of looking at influencer marketing right now. Uh, one is it's a marketplace. It's transactional. You buy someone, they publish something, and that's it. And it costs a lot of money. And I can tell you from the most recent uh, outreach campaign I did, reaching out to mommy bloggers, that influencer marketing is, is not cheap. On the other hand, there's the organic uh, approach. And the organic approach is basically finding people that are influential and making them fans of your brand. And I'm a big fan of this because I think that at the end of the day, it comes down to people. Influencers are people, and people work on emotions. They work on relationships, and you want to try to develop a long-term relationship, a mutually beneficial long-term relationship with any influencer in your industry. The best way to start doing that is to start following them, is to start engaging with their content, sharing their content, commenting on their blog posts. You know, one of the reasons that Buffer became so big is that Joel from Buffer you know, commented on all these popular social media marketing blogs that he found a target audience for that he wanted them to use his Buffer button. And that's how Buffer started as being extremely, extremely aggressively commenting on blogs, but they were all done in an authentic and helpful way. And it really put them on the radar of a lot of blogs. And, and there you go, that now you see Buffer is huge today. So um, always be thinking of developing relationships. And the, the better relationship you can develop before reaching out, uh, it's going to make your outreach all the more effective. The worst thing you can do is, you know, we're a big fan of your blog. We're a big fan of you. Reach out and send an email. They look at you and they go, wow, this person doesn't even follow me. They've never engaged with any of my tweets. They haven't commented on any of my blogs, and yet they say they're a fan. Um, that's what you want to avoid. The cool thing is, once you do this for a while, I do outreach where my first email is not successful, so I'll do a follow-up. For the follow-up, I'll check out on Twitter, and I'm finding I'm, I'm actually you know, being followed by a lot of the people that I want to reach out to. So then I'll just do a Twitter DM, and there's already that social proof that we follow each other, right? And a lot of influencers may do auto follow backs, what have you, but if you can make that connection, and you can then message them on a social network in addition to be able to do it over an email, it's obviously going to help, help your communications be all the more effective as well. So hopefully that advice helps you. That's great. Yeah, thank you. Um, 
Uh, here's one from Sherry who's asking, is there a minimum number for the Twitter ad audience to be able to use it in an ad? And um, Sherry, yeah, I can take that question. You have to have 500 people in the audience in order to uh, to advertise on Twitter. At least that's my understanding. Neil, do I get that right? Yeah. Do you know a different number? Yeah. I think they increased that recently to a thousand. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So one way that you could work around that is you could continue adding different domains to include uh, additional competitors or to add industry uh, leading sites that might have a lot of overlap with your content. Uh, and I want to I want to tell you a, yeah I want to tell you a story about the power of Twitter tailored lists and and how Basuma can help. But um, in in a related topic. There's a really, really smart guy named Larry Kim, who's a marketing authority. He does a lot of speaking. He has his own pay-per-click company called WordStream out of Boston. And I saw him present of how he basically creates these tailored audiences on Twitter uh, in a different way, not using Buzzsumo, but finding email addresses of journalists that put these email addresses on their bio because you can upload, and in Facebook as well, you can upload a database of email addresses. So whenever he has a new piece of content that he wants to get press coverage on, he will promote it to this tailored audience of just journalists. Uh, and he gets tremendous coverage and backlinks from a lot of his content. So that's the power of Twitter tailored audiences. And I think using a combination of BuzzSumo and that approach, you can do some pretty cool things. That's sort of a ninja tactics. Hopefully, uh, hopefully that got you thinking. Um, but that alone, I mean, if you have a $1,000 ad campaign, uh, right there, I think BuzzSumo using that tailored audiences can probably save you a few hundred bucks in terms of lowering your cost per click and what have you, cost per conversion. So that alone should pay for whatever BuzzSumo Pro these days costs, in all honesty. That's great. Yeah, thanks for sharing that tip. Look out, journalists. The ninja audience is coming. Um, <laughs> yeah, so Paula, Paula is asking what other tools you use in addition to BuzzSumo. Well, you know, if I go back to that list, and in fact, uh, let me do this very quickly here. Uh, Social media agencies or any agency requires a tool stack of a lot of different tools. And uh, let's see here. I had that slide on it takes a lot of tools to get the job done. So I can give some shout outs here. One second. Uh, while he, um, while he is there, we go. there you go. Okay, go ahead. So uh, my clients are not really concerned with compliance. I don't really use any compliance tools. Uh, for listening, uh, I don't use a custom listening tool. I have used TalkWalker and BrandWatch if you're interested in a pure listening tool. I like those tools. I like BuzzSumo as well because it, it's actually headquartered in the UK. And when that question came about foreign languages, I find that European companies handle foreign languages a lot better than American companies do. Um, and uh, TalkWalker and BrandWatch actually both come out of Europe. BrandWatch comes out of the UK as well. So, um, I, you know, I think they have a little competitive edge there. Uh, primarily for, for um, analytics, there's a lot of different tools out there. Um, simply measured from an enterprise perspective is obviously, the, you know, uh, the best tool there. Uh, but there are other tools you can use. You'll have to email me that separately. For social media management, I'm a big fan of, of Spout Social for my day-to-day -day social media. But I also use a tool called eClincher. Uh, for social media management as well. Um, employee advocacy, there's a lot of different tools out there that I've used. Um, boy, uh, there's a lot of great tools out there for that. Um, uh, brand advocacy, uh, I don't use a specific tool for that right now. Content marketing, obviously BuzzSumo is my main tool there. Uh, social selling, really not using any tools outside of LinkedIn. Uh, LinkedIn in mails, LinkedIn sales navigator. Uh, social CRM, big fan and a nimble influencer marketing. In addition to BuzzSumo, there are tools like Little Bird, like Tracker, uh, that you can be using as well. If you're curious, Insight Pool is another great tool in terms of just purely influencer marketing. Uh, social customer service, not something I do. I don't do social recruiting. Engagement marketing, this is mainly campaigns. Uh, big fan of Agora Pulse because they have a dashboard and allow you to do campaigns and do some cool things with that. Uh, paid social, I'm a big fan of Ad Espresso uh, to manage Facebook ads. Uh, visual social, nothing specifically, although I use Tailwind for Pinterest. I use something called Grum, G-R-U-M, to post to Instagram from my PC. I know that uh, it might violate the terms and, uh, terms and conditions of Instagram, but there's a lot of companies doing it, uh, and there's a lot of other tools out there. So, um, yeah, you know, that's something you can do. Social automation, uh, I've used a tool called Sosito before. 
which is a great tool. Um, eCleanser also has some automation features that I use, and hopefully that gives you some ideas for some other tools uh, if you're in the market for them. Yeah, that's great. Thanks. That's a really good list, Neil. I appreciate that. Uh, Mallory is asking if you can run paid ads through BuzzSumo. Um, no, you can't. I would suggest that, um, you know, if you're going to boost a post on Facebook, that finding content on Facebook that resonates with your audience and tailoring your content to match that is probably a good way to stretch those dollars. But there's no, uh, no way to run paid ads through BuzzSumo. And let's see, Sherry is asking if she can share this presentation with her students. Neil, can people share the link when they get it? Um, yeah, you can share the link. The, the PowerPoint itself is, is not uh, being distributed, but yeah, feel free to share the link. Good. Okay. And I think that is all. Oh, wait, what, last question. When you're paying an influencer, there doesn't seem to be a standard as far as compensation. Do you have a formula for figuring out how much you'd be willing to pay? Some people pay based on the number of followers or fans, but as you mentioned, it's really important how authoritative their website is and how, um, how much engagement they have. Uh, I pay according to market price. So at the end of the day, influencers determine their price, and you need to come up with a list of influencers in terms of priority. You need to create your own algorithm. I know my agency has its own algorithm of how we value influencers, mm -hmm. and then it goes by market price. Um, at the end of the day, there's two different ways of paying influencers. There's one is being totally transparent and having your clients pay them. Uh, the other way is, have, is you paying them and uh, blocking out that cost to your clients. Um, if you are doing the latter and blocking out the cost, uh, that's where it gets, you know, th there's no one way of determining how much to pay other than going through the list, prioritizing, starting at a certain amount, and seeing who will bite for that amount. If you ask an influencer how much or you go according to their website, it's always going to be their highest price. Often I find if you say you only have a certain amount of budget and uh, they want to work with you, they'll lower their price for you. So uh, there's no one given way of doing it. That's what I've found to be best. I start with a, a high priority list. And let's say I only have 10 people I want to work with. I'll, you know, I'll message 30, 40, um, and I'll go from there. Not everyone responds as well, right? So you're always going to be reaching out to way more people than you need to be. Um, but combining that with a priority and with, with a starting with a limited budget is probably the best way to get the most bang for your influencer marketing buck, if that makes sense. That does. And with that, we'll wrap up the session. Neil, this has been absolutely fabulous. I've learned a ton from you um, and listening to how you use BuzzSumo for agencies. And I just wanted to say thanks for, for doing this. To everyone who is part of the session, thanks so much for your time today. And certainly if you have any questions, the uh, contact information uh, Neil shared for him. And I'm just Susan at BuzzSumo. So thanks again. Expect to get a link to our recording uh, in the next day to. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, Neil. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Best of luck and keep in touch.